couple of years down the road, um, you squint against the sun that rises over downtown Los Angeles. You turn around. Um, before you leave the uh, the building that has uh, the morning radio station that you were just on, before you leave it, you turn, and standing there is uh, DJ Jason Light of W-L-A-N-A-L-A-X fame. You were just a guest on his morning radio show. Yeah. Yeah. What um, show? What show? What's the show called? Uh, Jason Light's Spooky Mornings. <laughs> Why is our is the show spooky in nature? Well, I mean, yeah, it's spooky because it like it starts a little earlier than most morning radio shows. Most morning radio shows start, uh, you know. Some as early as 6 a.m., sometimes 6 30. You know, morning radio is traditionally like you know pretty early, but yeah, DJ uh Jason Light's spooky mornings starts at 3 a.m. The hour of the witch. And the way that his radio show works, uh is that so the first like our first about hour is mostly like really strange, almost like art bell. It's like an art bell like atmosphere where it's people calling in talking about, you know, meeting aliens or strange supernatural creatures or whatever. Yeah. And Jason Light plays the role of look, I'm not saying I believe all this stuff, but you know, it's interesting to hear other people's points of view sure but then sometimes also like you know even during the spooky segment uh it's sort of like there is a he always has a somewhat jovial outlook on it you know he's never like necessarily buying all in to what people are saying he's skeptical he may he cracks jokes and stuff like that and so he does that um for, like I said, about an hour, hour and a half. It's kind of spooky. But then, like, as it gets later in the morning, like, the closer it gets to the sun rising, the, like, the less spooky it becomes. So by the time it hits, like, about 6.15 a.m., it's just, like, you know, morning radio. We're just, like, talking about, like, the movies you saw this weekend in your personal lives and you know, uh, current events yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. There's not, there's there. It's yeah. The, the sort before of, before that it's a spooky, the spooky segment. Yeah. This is what you called it. The spooky segment with DJ Jason light. And so, uh, but he does have a pretty wide reach. So like it, it always, it always pays to get on radio on the radio with Jason light, you know, it'll definitely help your, uh, your social sure. media numbers, you know, get people to come out to uh to your shows and stuff. So uh you turn and before you leave, and you're like, All right, Jason, well, uh I always appreciate uh you having me on. And uh yeah, put put her there, brother, and you kind of like stick your hand out uh to shake his hand. And uh he goes to shake your hand, but his hand like goes like kind of through yours, you know. And he's like, oh, yeah, Ruined my hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you're like, oh, yeah. And so you leave. So it's um, I can't shake his hand because he has no physical form. Yeah. And as he walks away, you hear him go like, ooh, he's a ghost. Yeah, he's a ghost. So fuck this. You can- <laughs> come on. Spooky segment. So, um, you uh, walk down the, the street. There's a ghost. The whole thing is spooky. Yeah, but he does a good job of mixing it up. You know, he doesn't have to just talk about ghost stuff. You know, that very morning. Um, <laughs> that yeah, very morning. Yeah, yeah. He actually like went through and raided uh, every 
a Halloween movie. And like, that was like the segment, you know what I mean? So like he can talk about, you know, entertainment. I guess that's, I, th- I guess Halloween is kind of spooky too. I guess he kind of usually does do a lot of spooky stuff, but I guess he doesn't realize it, you know? Yeah. So you leave. Yeah. I guess when you're a ghost, you walk down the street, there's a, um, a diner that you really like. It's like an old school, like Greek diner. You know what I'm saying? Hey, all right. You walk in, there's pies on display. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, yeah. So um, you sit down. The waitress walks over. She's like, "Uh, hi, uh, my name is uh, Lisa. What can I get you? And you're like, Lisa, I got to be honest with you that their uh, chocolate cream pie is calling my name. Not literally, huh? You immediately regret it. You're kind of still in like, you know, joking mode from the uh, the radio show, you know? So she's like, all right. She like walks away or whatever. It's the kind of diner where every table has a, it's a, like a jukebox. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Um, you're kind of sitting there. They're playing uh music. Um, they're playing that song where it's like, "Give me a ticket to an aeroplane. I ain't got time to take a fast train." You know that song? Lonely days and go. I'm coming oh, yeah. home. Baby, just a little. And you're kind of like singing it to yourself as it's playing. <laughs> yeah. And then you kind of. Right as the song is ending, you realize that the voice coming out of the juke- jukebox is your singing voice. The jukebox uh, falls silent. So she uh, comes over. She uh, drops that piece of pie in front of you. Hey, what the fuck was with it? Why is my voice in the jukebox? <laughs> She's like, oh, what? My my voice is coming out of the jukebox. She goes, oh, it's my yeah. voice. So she goes on to explain to you that uh, recently uh, the Lanolax Corporation they came out with this new technology where um, if you're out, like people can like simulate your voice like with AI or whatever, and program it into um, ju- the jukebox so that for everyone who sits down in front of these jukeboxes, it's their singing voice. You know. Man, that sucks. Man, that's your... that's like not what I want to hear. I'll tell you what you do here, though. Next, coming through those surprisingly loud speakers, your voice uh, crooning the song uh, "Shimmer" by Fuel. And at this okay. point, you start right. singing along with it, like very, like like at the top of your lungs, before you even realize what's going on. Sure. So in the um, harmonies. Yeah. You harmonize with like your like with yeah, your yeah. own voice. And for a second, if for a second it feels like you are in communion with your soul as you harmonize on shimmer. Feels like that would break some glass, you know. It doesn't break glass, but you look over and there's a woman's like sitting uh, a few booths away and her hair is like been like blown straight up. You know what I mean? It's stuck there almost <laughs> like, like Marge Simpson. And she's like, what Static, the hell? Yeah. And you're like, Whoop. and you kind of just like look down and stop singing. She dreams of champagne dream. So you finish your food and you go home. And as you, uh, Open the front door to your to your house. You uh you close the door and you resist the urge to go, honey, I'm home. 
Do I do just I live because... alone? No. Do I am I do I have a live in partner? Like what do I have roommates? So who am I yelling honey? I'm home to. Well, you resist the you know, urge. It, it to honestly do it. doesn't matter. You resist the urge because it's it's still like you know, kind of early in the morning, and you're like, you know, you don't know if the uh the love of your life is awake or asleep. Oh Lord. And so you're like, time to find out. <laughs> so you uh you, Yeah. So yeah, so you uh because you've been you've been missing your lady love, you know. You can't kissing wait. That kissing. To, you can't wait to see her. So you um you walk up the uh the stairs, walk into uh your bedroom. You walk over to your nightstand, and there's like this small box there. You look down at it. You feel like some goosebumps start to pop up along your fucking arms and neck and balls. Those three areas. Yep. Oh, you open up. Neck and balls. Neck and balls. <laughs> you open up the that uh, cherry red box and some like tinkling little like music starts to play you know you know what I'm talking about and inside yeah, the music box yeah inside the music box is a what has to be it's a small one but it's a marble statue of a ballerina and you watch as it you know lithely uh dances across that what you think of as the stage sure and you look down and you go hello my lady did you dream aaron i say this, this to is the fuck is ha <laughs> happening so this is a few years down the road. Are you saying that this ballerina is the love of my life? Are you saying this ballerina is the love of my life? So you've fallen in love with blood woman, but yeah, you've fallen in love with the ballerina of a music box. So what's ha what happened is um, it's a few years yes. down the road and yeah. <laughs> and one day you were out, you went to a, um, a, a flea market uh, near nearby your house and you saw this music box and the woman uh working there was like oh yeah that'll be um that'll be ten dollars if you want it and she's like just so you know though like it's, it's really hard to open like no one can i don't know the last time this has even been open to be honest with you and you go like oh really and you kind of go to like touch it and it just like springs open and inside the music box is that m marble ballerina. And she twirls and she twirls. Why are you saying it like that? Because you were like, she it is a marble small ballerina that dances across a music box. Yeah. This is not this is not something this is not a woman I would come to love, Matt. <laughs> so there's just something about it that just like grabs you and like strikes you. And the woman behind the counter is like visibly like struck by this. And she's like, she's like, oh man, I don't even the last time that anyone opened this was who it must have been 60 years ago. My grandfather, Olaf Henchman. And she looks up at you and she goes, Olaf Henchman? Yeah. She looks up at you and she goes, It's almost like you're destined to have it. How about 
six dollars and you're like sure fucking and so you get you get you get four dollars off and you bring the music back music music back music box back to your home and at night you know before you go to bed you uh you know you have the ballerina dance for you you know and um sometimes you know what uh, oh after Pat, that is so I have the ballerina dance for me. Well, yeah. I mean, because you, you open the box up, you know, I mean, that's what it, you know, it's what it does. And so that's what it's programmed to do, you know, but you start to feel like she's doing it for you. Not like this, you know, spring loaded mechanism that, you know, responds to, you know, touch or whatever. You feel like this is, there's just something about you. You're also, this is a couple of years down the road. You're very lonely. And, you feel like, uh, you know, this is your last chance. All right. You know, or it's a porcelain. It's an inanimate object that is very, it's very small, but it is finely detailed. It, it doesn't matter. It just means I have to squint to see it because it's so tiny. This is awful. This yeah, is, and like there's a problem here. <laughs> I've yeah, had a dude. break of some kind. I'm so lonely, and I think my last shot at love is with this ballerina inside of a, a small marble ballerina inside of a music box that I bought for six dollars. Again, very forty percent off. It's very there's a lot of detail. So, yeah, you kind of are like, and like, you definitely feel weird about it. You know, it you don't tell anyone. It's something that you feel a little strange about, you know? No, of course. Oh my God. Of course not. A little. <laughs> so I'm horny for a ballerina in a music box. <laughs> so, the next day you wake up and you wake up uh, and you're like, you know what? I need to get what you call uh, Aaron's uh, Aaron's fast delights. What it is is there's you know that there's those places where it's like a pizza hut and taco bell like you know what i'm talking about where there's two restaurants yeah, in yeah. one there is this um yeah. this new thing that's opened uh where it's it's about it has 50 different fast food options and it goes around in a circle and the in, it's like a donut and the the donut hole yeah, is yeah. where you sit and eat and things are on you have like little scooters and stuff so you can just scoot around in a circle like that's if you do the that's oh, if you buy man. that's if you buy in for what for what they call the ouroboros the ouroboros means you can go around the circle and grab as much uh, from wherever you want it's all of it you know it that that will but I'll be honest with 250 dollars you are allowed to get stuff to go but also like don't take advantage you know so um so you uh decide you're gonna go there for breakfast because they've got it all mcdonald's breakfast you know burger king breakfast uh kfc is doing this is a few years down the road kfc has started their new uh their new thing is kfc in the morning where it's like breakfast foods involving fried chicken. So there's like, okay, it's mostly Taco. chicken and waffles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you go there. To, uh, so yeah. So uh, you go there. It's um the name of the place. It's called <laughs> the seas of infinity. So you go to the seas of infinity and you're like, that sucks. And 
you've never done the Ouroboros, but you're like, you could see yourself doing it. Like, you know, if you turn no. 50, maybe no. that's what you would do. Is you know, you and your boys would go out. And, yeah. And like get on your scooters and just scoot around because, because it is big. That's why, why they call it the seas of infinity. If you were to like gorge on fast food. Yeah. How much money do you think it would cost to where you wouldn't like, it just doesn't make sense money wise. But there's, I'm saying that, but there's also like, there's no time limit or nothing, you know? The, with the Ouroboros, you get so I'm to, supposed to hang out at this fast food bar and eat, just eat fast food all day on my scooter. I mean, you if know, you, you if you do the, the Ouroboros, scooter, yeah, you fucking need it. Yeah. They go, if you choose the Ouroboros, you well, will sail the seas of infinity. And you get to keep the mobility scooter. No. Oh, no, you don't. Well, then, no, I'm not going to I'm not going to spend two hundred dollars to eat. Fifty dollars worth of fast food. Well, I'm not saying you have to. I'm just saying. I'm just saying this is Worst what the place is known for. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. you go there for, for breakfast. The would do that. Aaron's fast delights. You get like a um, a pancake from the McDonald's breakfast, a piping huh? sausage patty. From Burger King. And an order of chicken and waffles. But it's the um for in the uh you you get the uh the drumstick option where it's waffles and but there's like just a drumstick. Drummies for life, you whisper to yourself. What the fuck is going on in my life? That I'm eating a pancake, a single piece of sausage. And an order of chicken and waffles, but it's the drums. It's the drumstick version. So that's what I'm having for breakfast at this place. You're just, yeah, you're just kind of hungry, I guess, you know? It's just such a weird, I'll have one pancake, one from this place, one piece yeah. of sausage. From, like what the fuck? Yeah. It's multiple that's ones. So ridiculous. You know, it's for special occasions. I mean, not special occasions, but you don't do it all the time. You know, you're just kind of hungry. I so. fucking hope not. So uh, you sit down with your um, your breakfast at the uh, the seas of infinity, and you realize like, oh shoot, I don't have any like maple syrup. So you uh, walk over and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, where can I grab the? Where's like a uh, grab some some maple syrup? You ask the people at the, you know, at the um, behind the counter, and they're like, oh, our yeah. our syrup so station is waffle place. It, yeah, uh, the KFC, and they're like, yeah, so the um. The syrup station is just like around the corner there. And you're like, okay. So you walk over to grab, and you're kind of thinking to yourself, like, like which wh- Aaron, let me ask you something. What kind of a syrup man are you? Not a lot. Not a lot. I don't like a lot. You know, I mean, if, if we're talking like, give me regular or straight up good maple syrup is great. Once you so have you that, that, it's hard to go back to like the imitation pancake syrup, you know? Sure. And these guys are doing like they're they're doing like still the do good. It. They're doing like the good syrup. That's kind of what KFC is more. Oddly enough, it's kind of what it's more known for these days is their uh, the quality of syrup. So you um, walk around the corner to the syrup station. And. You're walking and you kind of realize like. Oh, this is like a, this is not like a very well lit corridor. You know, you're like, that's kind of strange. Yeah. yeah. Suddenly you hear like uh, someone like snap their fingers and all around you in this dark corridor, you suddenly realize it's actually very dark. It's actually quite dark. And so you're like, what the hell? It gets really dark. And then someone snaps their fingers and a bunch of candles suddenly like, like flame on, you know, they're all dedicated okay. to the, Vir- they're all dedicated to the Virgin Mary. And oh, God. You, for a second, you like close your eyes. You're like, what the heck? And as you close your eyes, you hear like, 
like an like a, like almost like a church organ go like do 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 no bow and you're like what the hell and sitting like in front of you is this like um all like in the the light of the the you know the the candles the virgin mary candles is this man sitting at at like this giant organ that he's playing and he has like half of a mask on covering his face you know yeah and he is playing that organ he uh at this point he's playing uh Come on, come on, come on and touch me, babe. Can't you see that I am not afraid? But it's like in a mic, like, but he finishes it with do, 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 like really like creepy or whatever. <laughs> yeah. He turns to you and he goes, hello, Aaron. I am the fast food phantom. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> He has like a wah pedal. <laughs> yeah, for his organ. He goes, Aaron, I need your help. And I think I can make it worth your while. What do you want? So he goes on to tell you that as the fast food phantom, he has been like stuck there. Stuck there in like this like dark corridor, you know what I mean? Near the syrup station uh, for he doesn't even know how long uh, he used to be the manager of one of the. Uh, it's uh, there was a GameStop that was inside the seas of infinity. It's the only non fast food uh, related thing there. So he used to manage there and he goes, look, it's a very long story, but now I kind of, you know, haunt this fast food uh, establishment. So he um he goes, Aaron, as part of my banishment from fast food. I can't go out and order any of the delicious meals that I crave. Don't he's say like, it like that. He's like, sorry, I don't, I, I don't talk to. Way. He's yeah. like, I don't talk to a lot of people. It shows. Like, he goes, Aaron. If you go out and get me. A double quarter pounder with cheese, large fries, four piece nugget, and Arnold Palmer. He's like, I can make her real, and his his the the only eye that you can see like just like shines for a second, almost like it's like a star exploding. No. 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 Absolutely not. <laughs> he goes, Aaron, I can make the battery. It doesn't matter. Real. It does. Yeah. yeah. Fine. Then what, then what? She just fucking lives trapped in my in my home. He goes. Right? Like is she who is she? You know, she He goes, Well, Aaron, there's only one way to find out. I want no part of this at all. This is a bad idea in every way, shape, and form. The ballot should stay in that box. Uh, I wish he got out of my head. He looks at you and he goes, but Aaron, it's your last chance. In a tear from underneath the mask, you see a tear come down from underneath that fucking mask. And for a second, you're like, whoa. You're just awed by the drama of it all. I, I would goes, also who's paying for this meal? 
He's like, well, I mean, I don't Is have he any expecting money. me to foot the bill for this thing. He's like, yeah, just get, get me that and I'll make the ballerina real. You know, she loves you. I'm not going and, and you feel like she does on Burger King. Thank you. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. He kind of like goes, okay, well, the syrup station's right there, by the way. You look over and you see it. You walk over and grab the maple syrup, regular. From behind, he's playing that, uh, the outro to that song, Layla, you know, by Derek and the Dominoes. They're like, yeah, yeah. It's not a church. It's not a church organ. Yeah, but it's like it's like the end where it's like the piano part. Oh, and so okay. oh yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like in Goodfellas where they find all those bodies and it's playing. And so yeah. he plays that as you walk out, you're like, all right. And, and you kind of like think to yourself, like Yeah, that part. And you kind of think and you kind of think to yourself, uh dramatic much. You uh you sit down and you eat. And I got to be honest with you, Aaron. It's the best breakfast that you've ever had in your fucking life. I don't believe that for one bit. A pancake, a piece of sausage, chicken and waffle that I'm eating several minutes after it was served to me because I had to t- fucking talk to this guy. This sucks. All of this so- sucks. So, like, the food is still, like, warm, even though you were there talking to the, the fast food phantom for, you know, a few minutes and um and denying him. You had denied him three times, like uh, Peter did to Christ. Please. And so you sit there, and the food is still warm, and the the sausage patty is succulent. It's the perfect amount of food. You don't feel like stuffed or anything like that, you know? And you kind of like uh, sit there and you kind of like look at your empty plate in front of you. And um, there's like syrup, you know, leftover syrup. There's a couple like crumbs all over. There's a little bit of ketchup got in there somehow. And you look down at it and it looks like the aftermath of like a civil war battle or something for just a second. And you look over and sitting next to you, like at another table is a guy who looks <laughs> remarkably like you, except he's like really jacked. And it's kind of the same thing. He just ate a bunch of, he just ate a very satisfying breakfast too. And you guys kind of, you look over at him. And he looks over at you and you guys like lock eyes and you just go, we did good. And he's like, and he goes, and he's like, what? Like he doesn't speak English. So, but he says, he says what? Yeah, he doesn't know what you said. But he's he, never mind. He says, he's what? visiting from he's visiting from Sweden, so he's like he doesn't understand English or anything. So uh, you're like, all right, whatever. And so um, you go home, and uh, you walk upstairs, eager to see the ballerina that you love so much. You walk in, you open up the um the music box, and there's nothing in there. It's the best thing it's had. This is a blessing in disguise. Yeah. It's um the ballerina is gone. It's uh it's empty. Except for what appears to be like a puzzle piece. And then suddenly you feel a bunch, like a like 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 a like a lot of stabbing sensations down your spine, and you go like I fucking it, it, hate this. it feels it feels like a bunch of like really sharp blades or something uh, hit you yeah. in the back, and you kind of go like ah, and like your momentum like turns you around, and standing in front of you is uh this guy, he's dressed kind of like the Riddler, he's got like an all green suit, he's wearing like a green top hat or whatever, and in yeah. he's got like a like a question mark on his chest and like in his hand are a bunch of like razor sharp puzzle pieces and he looks at you and uh, in his other hand in his other hand is like uh, the marble ballerina and he goes 
you've been pierced by the puzzler. He flicks out the rest of those puzzle pieces and they all hit you in the neck and your head falls off. Fuck this. Fuck him. Why? Why? Your head, uh, your head stays alive for like about five seconds after it falls off your body and you see him, uh, take the ballerina and throw it in the trash and then he leaves. So Jesus. How awful. How pointless. A fucking puzzler. <laughs> Fuck him. He's back. It's been a minute. Oh, yay. He fucking sucked. <laughs> the puzzler? Yeah, the puzzler. 